Joining me now, the vice chair of BlackRock, he's Philip Hildebrand. He's also in charge of all sustainable investments at BlackRock. So thank you so much. What a great way to actually kick off Davos uh, 2020, Philip. When you look at sustainability and the announcement that you made last week, how have clients reacted to it? Well, I think clients have been telling us for a while that this is uh, an important issue. They've recognized that climate risk is investment risk. Sustainability risks are ultimately investment risks, whether it's through flooding, physical events, regulatory development. So they've understood and they've been calling for this in a sense to help them get ahead of these trends and, and recognize that we need to, as a fiduciary, respond to the fact that climate risk has become an investment risk. Do, do you see competitors and the industry following suit? Will there be a, a real significant and sizable change? We believe so. We believe this is, Larry said it in his letter, this is really a fundamental reshaping of finance. I think we're at the very beginning of a significant uh, shift in, in finance and, and we hope as a, as a firm, as a large firm, that we can make a difference. Perhaps we can be an accelerator, an amplifier, but this is happening anyhow. So I think we want to get ahead of it on, on behalf of our clients and be there for them. What would be your biggest challenge in it? So BlackRock is mainly or, you know, in large a provider of index products. So how do you translate sustainability in those? Well, we have, as you know, we have both. We have a large active platform. We have a, a large index platform. And I think the key there is that we work very closely, increasingly closely, with the uh, providers of indices to make sure that the index providers also uh, move in that direction. They've been doing that for some time. So I think you'll find if you talk here to the index providers, they are very much on board of this. They recognize the indices have to change. And that will then allow this, this very significant shift in capital. We think this is going to entail a major reallocation of capital towards uh, more sustainable investing. What have you been he hearing from chief executives? Are, are they worried that their businesses will be affected by climate change sooner than they thought two years ago? Well, I think like all big changes, it's always an opportunity and a risk. Uh, but I think, you know, with few exceptions, it's also very clear that, that almost all CEOs recognize that this is a reality. Uh, this is happening. So the question is, how do you adapt your business model to these changes? For, in some cases, it can be a great opportunity. In, in other cases, it will be a challenge. But th there are very few people who today feel that they can simply ignore this topic. Um, have you had many discussions with chief executives of companies that you're invested in, in a way forward to, to push sustainability in, in, you know, again, something that's sizable, that's just not talk, only yeah, talk? Absolutely. And this has been a big part of the initiative that we launched last week, that we want to be much more transparent how we engage with the companies, also, frankly, be much more transparent how we vote. And we've made it clear that we expect uh, companies to live up to disclosure responsibilities uh, based on SASB or TCFD, uh, but basically make sure that we have the information, that the market has the information that allows investors to judge where companies are with regard to climate risk. Is there a risk that this push towards sustainability goes down the drain if we see a recession? No, I, I mean, look, over time, in the very long term, um, there may be a sort of uh, watering down of these return potentials that you have in sustainability. But I think this is a, a major shift that's just about to happen. This is no different than some of the shifts we've seen related to the baby boom after the war. So I, we really believe this is a fundamental reshaping of finance that will entail significant reallocation of capital and relative price changes. And so in, in, the sh in, in the short to medium term, this is an opportunity from an investment perspective to get better performance uh, and, and not a problem. Yeah, have you been frustrated by the, the fact that it's difficult to define or it's difficult to force companies? In fact, you can't force companies, but to, to actually measure the impact that climate change will have on them. That has been the principal challenge. Now, you know, the good news is we now have standards. We have, I mentioned, TCFD, we have SASB. So, uh, this, is, this has been the fastest evolving uh, process in a way to make sure that we do have some initial common standards, uh, at least with regard to disclosure. The public sector has been involved in this as well. Governor Carney has been, of course, at the forefront of, of pushing this. So I think with every year we're going to see uh, convergence in some of these standards. A lot of work remains to be done. Uh, if we don't have common standards, it's very hard to judge. But I think we're, you know, we're well on, on the way with these, with these initial standards. I mean, would we not be better off forcing companies to disclose it? Well, uh, you, there, there is going to be regulation. I mean, I think we should have no, no illusion about this. Ultimately, climate change cannot be tackled just by the private sector. This is a, a government problem. It will require sustained, coordinated 
government responses, there'll be laws, there'll be regulation, and then the private sector adapts to that. So that's, I think, a very important point to, to remember here. This is not a just a pure private sector problem. In the meantime, we have standards uh, that are beginning to kind of uh, lead to some of this convergence. Regulation is emerging, will follow, hopefully, and this will be the great challenge of the public sector to do this in a coordinated way. We cannot reach the Paris goals in the absence of coordinated, sustained uh, government policy. Should we measure GDP differently? Should, should, should there be another index that looks at GDP longer term, therefore incorporating some of these sustainability changes? Well, this, you know, this has been a long-standing uh, topic. There was a very famous speech by Bobby Kennedy during his presidential campaign where he calls for this. I think we will see the evolution of how we measure things, undoubtedly. These are risks that are severe risks. We're beginning to see them. Mm -hmm. They're manifesting themselves in flooding and fire and all kinds of natural events, and to simply ignore them and pretend they have no cost uh, would be a grave mistake. So I think this idea of a risk-adjusted optic to returns uh, is critical. And, and, you know, how exactly we'll measure GDP 20 years from now, I think, is very hard to tell. But I think there's no question that some of these risks that are already manifesting themselves today will have to be incorporated into the way we think of investing, into the way we think of measuring output, into the way we think of prosperity, frankly.